we're really not 100% sure on if this is a kettlebell swing, like a Russian swing, or a kettlebell American swing, which if it was an American swing, it's be called a kettlebell snatch. So we're just gonna go that it's a kettlebell snatch, which is harder, and the grips I'm using are relevant. Let's go get some. What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thanks for hanging out with me and watching me suffer through some daily workout content. So let's go ahead and get started. First, talk about what the workout is. We are off right now. All right, so what are we doing? We are doing the French Throwdown event number four. Um, we've been really honestly working through a lot of these French Throwdown workouts because one, they're fun. Um, you know, it's pre-programmed for you pretty much. Uh, and two, it allows you to look at times, kind of get an idea, game plan it. Um, you know, it's different than other workouts. And you can also compare times when people go there. And now, again, it's not necessarily fair because they're there competing um, and you are here just training and doing it. You know, it's not the floor isn't laid out in a similar way. You're not really sure about how they move equipment pieces and what equipment looks like and, you know, the judges there and all sorts of different things. So it's not really fair to compare, but again, it's just fun to do. So that was my uh, disclaimer. So let's, what is the workout? This is event number four of the French Throwdown, which is a sanctioned event this year. The final one, actually. And this workout is a six-minute time cap of a 60-calorie bike erg. And then technically in their notes, it's a 60... Double, 60 double kettlebell swings. Now, to be honest, like I'm really not sure what a double kettlebell swing is. Um, you know, if I told you to kettlebell swing, you might ask me, well, is it Russian or is it American? And that's a very viable and a good question. Like that's a, a good question to know. Is it Russian or American? Russian, of course, being the fact that the kettlebell will rise from between my feet. It will rise to, uh, parallel to the floor or perpendicular to my body. I essentially just come up to eye level, right? And so that's a Russian swing. And an American swing is where it goes from between my legs and it rises all the way up above my head, um, around my ears, right? So it's above, it's vertical, it's perpendicular to the floor and yet parallel to my body. Completely 90 degree different than a Russian swing. So. That was really the question that Andrew and I had um, that wasn't really brought up in the French Throwdown notes or the workout descriptions aren't up. So I, we weren't sure if it was a Russian or an American swing. Um, I've honestly, honestly, if it is a Russian, right, we're just swinging two kettlebells up to eye level, that would be a lot easier. Um, if we are swinging our kettlebells from between, double kettlebells from between our feet to above, a double kettlebell American swing, that's essentially just a double kettlebell snatch. So we decided, you know what, to heck with it, if we have to choose between a Russian swing or an American swing, which is technically a kettlebell snatch, we are gonna just treat it as a kettlebell snatch, a double kettlebell snatch. So we're essentially doing an American swing here. So um, 60 calories starts the workout off. Um, I finished in about 2.30, you know, 2.33, whatever the heck it was. Um, and we are getting started. Uh, I think in order to bike at that pace, I had to keep a 1500 calorie per hour pace. Um, Andrew biked a little bit slower, about 20 seconds slower than mine, but you're gonna see his kettlebell snatch as he goes for bigger sets. Now, uh, I wanna caveat this before we get further into the workout because I know what you guys are probably gonna say. <clears throat> and if you guys jump the workout and you know, skip the bike and jump straight to the kettlebell snatch and you're skipping this disclaimer, you should come back and listen to this. Um, Andrew really struggles with uh, his elbows and locking out. So I know you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna be like, Andrew's literally, you know, like when it gets further into the workout, you're gonna be like, hey, Andrew's not even locking out any of his kettlebell snatches and they're way off to the side. Um, he has some elbow issues. He actually tore a tendon in his elbow a while back and he's honestly never gotten it fixed. I don't know why he's never gotten it fixed, but he never has gotten it fixed. And so it tends to really play into his jerking and especially in any overhead positioning and kettlebell snatch is one of those movements. So again, we are not, he is not into competition. So a little grace, um, I understand it near the end, it's gonna look pretty bad. Just work through it and it's fine. He's not competing. Obviously if he was there competing, he would probably be no repped quite a few times on the kettlebell snatch and I probably would get no repped a few times also. I am, I am also human. So, you know, just kind of, you're fine, you know, get through it. All right, so anyways, um, how did we approach these kettlebell snatches, right? So um, with a six minute time cap, that is really, really, really aggressive. You gotta figure it takes you two thirty to three minutes to bike a 60 calorie, um, and then you've got three minutes approximately to do 
60 kettlebell snatches, double kettlebell snatches, which pretty much puts you at 20 a minute, which is 10 every 30 seconds. And to be honest, when we timed it before this, doing 10 kettlebell snatches, just doing 10 kettlebell snatches takes you like 22 seconds. So that doesn't really leave you a whole lot of wiggle room in terms of resting between, and it's really gonna blow you up. So Andrew and I approached it in a, in a couple different ways, right? Um, I believe I approached it in uh, decreasing rep scheme. So I went, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then I had, I believe I had like four sets of four, or four sets of five left. I believe my last set I had like 11 left that, you know, I tried for, I, I went for 10, 8, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, and then from there on out, I think I just had 20 left and I kind of just was like, whatever happens, happens. Um, Andrew went for a larger set from the get-go. I believe he did like 27, um, and then went to 37, and then went to like 40 something or other. And then his last his last set, I think he had like 10 or 11 or something like that. Um, so really difficult workout. It does not leave you any wiggle room at all. I'm not sure if the French throw that if they're doing a double kettlebell snatch or if a double kettlebell like Russian swing. If it was a Russian swing, that would be a whole heck of a lot easier. Um, this was really difficult to complete um, under the time cap. I mean, to be honest, like if you actually, if I was on a floor and I was moving a kettlebell, I probably wouldn't have finished this. doing this in the competition, you would probably move your kettlebells, um, so it wouldn't be, it would be quite a bit different um, in that aspect. <sighs> Russian swings would be a lot easier. Oh, that did not feel great. That's a good one though. One other thing to bring in under, one other reason we didn't do Russian is because I don't think Russian is a really good idea for a competition. Um, the last time I remember seeing a Russian kettlebell swing in the competition was the ECC, the East Coast Championship, many years ago. Single kettlebell, but it was like a 100 pound kettlebell. And it's really hard, the reason I don't like Russian is because it's really hard to judge Russian, right? How do you judge it? It's very, depends on, honestly, it depends on where the judge stands, kneels, or sits at, right? Because the kettlebell must rise um, to like eye level, so it depends on you know, how does your judge judge eye level, right? Like, you know, in the heat of the moment, is that a good rep, is that a bad rep? You know, like, it's just difficult to do that. And it's just a lot easier to judge a American swing where it's just overhead locked out, um, as opposed to a Russian where it has to be, you know, parallel to the ground, perpendicular to your body, at eye level, it's just too many moving pieces. And so, um, that's essentially why we chose American. One, it was harder, and two, because, um, it's just it's just easier to judge. Um, also on top of it, you know, would I have finished there? Probably not because it requires me to move the kettlebell. Probably every 10 reps is what I would assume they probably make them do. And two, you usually have to put your kettlebells down and sprint to a finish or you get a cap plus one and I finished right at the time. Caps, I probably wouldn't have finished it. Um, now again, you know, if you're in a competition, is it different? You know, you're competing, you're competing with other people around you. I'm doing it by myself. Yeah, probably I could have gone a little faster, changed my kettlebell swings up a little more. And it also might be a Russian, not an American, which makes it a lot easier. Um, so anyways, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for hanging out. If you want to watch one of my other videos, click here. Thanks for hanging out with me and we will catch you guys later. See ya.